Okay, here we go. Hi there, Harvest family. Glad that you're able to join us for these times of devotion where we can just, you know, try to stay connected. Um, you know, I have always been interested in and fascinated by a compass. I don't know where I got my first compass or what my first compass looked like, but I do still have my official Boy Scout compass from back in the day, and it's it's around it's uh well it's it's around here somewhere but anyway it looks just like the one that's shown here in the official boy scout handbook page 132 7th edition third printing 1967 but i feel like probably like most guys I, I feel like I have a pretty good sense of direction um, until I can't see the location of the sun or the moon or some other reference point. That's when I get in trouble. And, that, and that's when a compass would really come in handy to serve as a, as a reference point. Now, the book of Acts tells the story of how the Apostle Paul he had appeared before the Sanhedrin, he had appeared before King Agrippa, and he had made his appeal to Rome to, to appeal to Caesar. And he begins his journey to Rome, starts off in a boat, in a sailboat, in fact. And I'm sure you all know the story. You know, you probably looked at the, the maps of Paul's missionary journeys in the back of your Bible when you were a kid, when you were supposed to be listening to the sermon. Yeah, we've all done that. But chapter 27 begins the account of, of that journey on that ship, on that sailboat, as they headed out for Rome. And by the time you get to verse 7 of chapter, uh, chapter 27, um, you can see that things aren't going very well. You know, unless you've been on a sailboat being pounded by a headwind and that wind coming from the exact direction that you're trying to go, then you really don't get a full appreciation of what Dr. Luke simply says when he says, we made slow headway for many days. Yeah. But Paul and his ship finally make it to the Isle of Crete, and they go into a, a port called Fair Havens, which sounds kind of like a retirement village. Seems like a good place to spend the winter, but, in, in fact, Paul tries to convince the centurion that staying in Fair Havens is just what they needed to do. But it says in verse 11, But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Then it goes on to say in verse 12, Since a harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that they should sail on hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. You know, it got me to thinking, just who's in charge here? <laughs> How many of you, you military folks, um, w when was the last time your orders were determined by a majority vote? Anyway, nevertheless, they decided to sail on, hoping to make it to Phoenix, which was about 40 miles up the southern coast of Crete. As you read on through the passage, Dr. Luke records in verse 13, he says, When a gentle wind, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought that they had obtained what they needed, what they wanted. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shores of Crete. And before very long, a wind of hurricane force called a nor'easter started to blow and swept down from the island. And then down in verse 18, it says, We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Now, if you've, if you've lived in this area, the Chesapeake Bay area, for any time at all, you know what we mean by a nor'easter. 
And you also know that a nor'easter can be pretty bad news. It can rack, uh, just wreak all kinds of havoc, wreak all kinds of havoc. And it was definitely bad news for the ship that Paul and, and Dr. Luke were on. The ship was blown off course and out of sight of land. And what was even worse, verse 20 says that neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days. So bottom line, as Phil would say, these boys were lost. No maps wouldn't have done them any good because they didn't know which way was up, which way was north. There was no sun or moon or land marks to give them any type of bearing. So what they really needed was a compass. Only problem was, however, the compass hadn't been invented yet. It was going to be another three or four hundred years before the compass was even invented. Listen to what Dr. J. Vernon McGee has to say about this passage. He says, to them, that's talking about the sailors, the voyage was guesswork. The south wind blew softly, so they supposed that they had obtained what they needed. They had obtained their purpose. The captain was a man who looked to self and to the wisdom of men. But Paul was looking to God. Later on, Paul would tell these men, I believe God. I have faith in God. J. Vernon McGee goes on to say, Life is a great sea. And our lives are little boats. We can sail our boats by human supposition, by majority opinion, if we choose to do so. But there is a storm blowing out there, a bit of a gale. We could even say a nor'easter. The tragedy is that amid the confusion, amid the world chaos and darkening storms, most men are still guessing. Most men still need some type of reference point. There are a thousand human plans for building a better society, for building a better world, yet everywhere we look, we see, we see failure and we see uncertainty. We all need a reference point. We all need God's direction. And we can have that reference point, we can have that direction by way of his guide and his compass, Jesus Christ. Through waters and shut it, my soul will embark. Follow your voice straight into the dark. And if from the course you intend I depart, speak to the sails of my wandering heart. Like the wind, you guide, clear the sky. Like the stars, your word will align my voyage and remind me where I've been and where I am going. shadows amidst fear and fog. Your truth is the compass that points me back north. Jesus, my captain, my soul's trusted Lord. All my allegiance is rightfully Like the wind, you'll guide, clear 
where the sky is before me and I'll drive this open sea the stars your world will align my voyage and Like the wind, you'll guide, clear the skies before me, and I'll glide the open sea. Like the stars, your world will align. Thanks again for joining us. Stay safe, stay well, be blessed, and a shout out, Renee and Tim McGraw. Yeah, that Tim McGraw. Thank you for the baby Taylor. Love you all. Be blessed. <laughs>